It starts with clay. This is around two to three hours old. At this stage, it looks incredibly rough and I'm just, just sort of pushing it towards a human form, really. So it's right at the very beginning of what, of what we're doing. I tend to try and build using small amounts of clay and literally spinning as often as this and keeping your eye moving all the way around because one shape affects another and how they all relate is hopefully, if it's successful, it will actually be the likeness that you're after. So it's important to keep looking at the reference. So you would plan to spend about 50% of the time looking at your reference. You then start building like this. Right now we're at the stage where I have to start making the model look more like him. So I'm going to link all the shapes and do a lot more measuring and looking, and hopefully by the end of this stage, it will resemble the singer. So at the moment, most of the changes I'm making are small, but really, really important. I find these lines really useful when I'm going over contours, because you can see how one shape will move into another, and it also helps me to clean up what I've modelled. But it's getting there, I mean, you know, I can start to see him. I'm reasonably happy that it's anatomically close, but not perfect yet. The thing that I do at this stage is to get a sponge and basically scrub out the surfaces like this and get rid of all the little tool marks that I've put into it. This can pull all the shapes together and bring out the natural contours of him, but slightly kind of overdo it a bit. And I'm thinking the fact that he's been through quite a traumatic experience and what you'd expect to see is not someone who looks fit and well but someone that's had his head chopped off. People wonder why, as it's seen from such a distance, why the details are so important. To begin with you have to concentrate on getting the larger masses and shapes in generally the right place but it's idiosyncratic shapes like nostrils, people's ears and when you put them all together it really does help to sell the image that you're trying to produce. So we've moved into another part of the department, the fiberglass room, where I'm going to start the mould making process. It's silver now because I've sealed the clay with a strippable vinyl spray. What it does is it um, stops the moisture from the clay affecting the fiberglass when I put the resin on. What I've done is I've separated the head into two parts, front and back, with this clay wall. So I'll lay on the fiberglass and when that's hardened, I can take this wall off, spin the head round and then put the second half of the mould onto the back. The first part of the process is using, this is a gel coat, so I'll paint all round, and so when that's hardened in about half an hour, I can incorporate this fiberglass matting, um, which you soak with the resin, lay it on, and with the brush, you move the fibres around the form, and again, that hardens, and essentially, this is, this is what we're after. That's it. We use a very soft, flexible silicon which is slightly translucent so you can add colour which helps skin tones, etc. I do end up painting on the surface later, but it does help to be able to colour the entire batch of silicon before you pour it into the mould. It makes a good basis for your paintwork. That's it. Okay, so sticky. <laughs> <laughs> See the blue that I've put in, that's not really what I intended, but I'll just paint over that. So there'll still be some blue in there, but I'll just paint it away. So if I cut him here, like that, so that eye should pop out, <laughs> like that, and then this one should, should go in.
So that's that. Good. I'm happy with that. The stage that you can see at the moment is I've given it a wash of a very dark browns and flesh tones that will sit hopefully in the um, pores and the lines that I've modelled because even though they are there, it's still a theatrical prop, so you, you, need, you need to bring them out. And at this point, you have to be quite brave and throw the colour on all over, and then with this sponge, literally just take away. So I'm soaking the dark colours away and hopefully leaving them in the depressions. It'll dry to a matte finish, but I'm actually quite happy with the greyness and I think it looks quite disturbing, so... Once I'm happy with it, I won't push it any further because you can just kill things and move them too far in different directions. So I'm actually quite happy with that. I've partitioned the core inside so that at the back of the bottles of blood and up the front there's a very basic hinge that allows the mouth to come open just a little bit. The eyes you can move, I've put some Vaseline in there so that they move up and actually come back down quite slowly as well so it doesn't look too rubbery, they don't snap shut like rubber. So it's just a little bit of movement that helps with the horror of things, really. There he is. What we do in the wig and makeup department is that we're adding the hair, and we start with the eyebrows, which are hair punched, and we're also gonna glue the wig down. We're actually pressing each hair into the silicone this is yak hair, and that is because if you would use human hair for this, it would be a bit too fine. Because it is a theatrical show, even with the paint job, it needs to be slightly, slightly more enhanced than it would in real life, because you want to see the wrinkles, you want to see the tiredness of the face, the dead in the face. It's important that the wig is attached really, really well because the head is really heavy. So you can imagine if you lift it in the hair, it needs to be very, very strongly glued so you don't just lift the wig. <laughs> and yeah, that's it. And then it's going to go back to prop and they do the final touches and test to see if the blood works as it should. Good thanks, how are you? Very good. Here's the there head is. with hair. Fantastic. It's great, and it's stuck, is it? Can I? It should be stuck, yeah. Test? <laughs> yeah. Because it's a focal point of this act, we spend a lot of time making the prop as convincing as possible because Salome interacts with it for about 10 to 15 minutes constantly. So it has to be as convincing as possible. Good. Good. Great. So you're going to play with the black yeah. now? Yeah. <laughs> Is it?